Welcome everyone. My name is Justin Martin. I'm a professor of psychology at Whitworth University. My scholarship interests are in social and moral development. And more recently, I've been exploring the intersection between the development of social moral concepts and the way those concepts are portrayed in superhero media. The title of my presentation is called The Many Ways of Wakanda, Viewpoint Diversity and Its Implications for Civics Education. It is a presentation for Spokane Public Library Celebration of Black History Month. And thank you for spending these next few minutes with me. I really appreciate it. Before I jump into my main ideas, I wanted to briefly acknowledge a few caveats. First, rather exploring the relationship between violence in children's programming and pro-social attitudes and behaviors, or exploring a relationship between violence in children's programming with antisocial attitudes and relationships. I'm aware that violence in children's programming is a serious issue that have been pointed out by scholars for decades. And although my specific view on these potential relationships is beyond the scope of this presentation, I just wanted to acknowledge that I know this is something that scholars care deeply about. Excuse me. I also am aware that what I'm going to talk about requires heavy interest and buy-in from parents, teachers, children who may disagree on certain aspects of, of what they want, what their goals are in a context of children's development or appreciation of viewpoint diversity or any kind of educational goal. So I'm not assuming that everything that I'm going to talk about is going to be received the same way. And I totally understand if some of the ideas I'm going to talk about, um, some people are going to de determine that, um, th that they're not convinced or, or what I'm advocating for in a way isn't justifiable given your own interests, your own goals, and, and kind of how you, you view superhero media. So I'm definitely aware of that. Lastly, although I am going to be talking about a superhero film, my ideas are not exclusive to superhero media. My hope is that the concepts that I talk about can be seen as being applicable to other forms of children's media as well. Um, so yeah, I just want to get those out there. Oops, so sorry about that. So um, why Black Panther? So the first two bullet points I'll discuss together. So in a way, I believe that the main character of Black Panther isn't T'Challa, it's Wakanda. And I think because of that, the, the features of Wakanda, if those, if those are the things that you pay attention to, I think really gives us a good window into different aspects of humanity, particularly when large groups of humans try to decide to do life together. And, and basically what I mean is when that happens, when that decision takes place, what you tend to see are areas of clear agreement amongst people, but also areas of disagreement. And although the latter is going to be my focus of this presentation because of its implications for viewpoint diversity, I think the film does a really good job of highlighting the areas in which people tend to agree on certain things, what those agreements look like, what are the values that bind those agreements, but also what are the values that inform people's disagreements. And this also relates to the third point, which is that I think the film's complexity offers a lot with regards to thinking about how to approach questions about nationhood, citizenship, personhood, what does it mean to belong? What does it mean to be part of a larger community? What does it mean to be a part of your local community? I think a lot of these questions are raised and raised in really interesting ways in the film. So what I'm gonna briefly talk about as I reference a few examples from um, the film, is this theory called social domain theory, because this is the, the theory that kind of orients my approach to this topic. And broadly speaking, the, the, the theory argues that very early on in development, even in young children, we participate and observe qualitatively different social interactions. And as a result of our attempts to understand and make sense of those interactions, we tend to use concepts or rely on concepts or cultivate or develop concepts that fall within three broad domains. There's the moral domain, which deals with issues of harm and fairness. There's a conventional domain, 
which deals with issues of norms, customs, rules, laws, policies. And then there's the psychological domain that tends to deal with things like personal jurisdiction, personal prerogative, autonomy, intentions, emotions, and things of that nature. And the idea is that in our social world, we're constantly engaged with interactions that apply, implicate these domains or include features of these domains. And what I have here briefly are some examples from the film that, are, that I think are really uh, highlight some of these features. Um, that the discussion to intervene or isolate, which is a, a large part of the Black Panther film, I think could be looked at from an issue of justice. There's a ceremonial battle that I think you can look at also from an interest of justice, albeit procedural justice, making sure the procedures regulating that battle are done fairly and enforced fairly. But then there's also the fact that they're procedures themselves, right? Which are part of norms and customs, right? Which we typically think of as, as being part of um, the conventional domain, or at least, I'm sorry, social domain theory, will consider being part of the conventional domain. There's also foreign policy. So what is the foreign policy with regards to the use of vibranium? What are the details of the isolationist policy that Wakanda's uh, currently subscribed to at the start of the film, right? The idea that there are rules or policies, the kind of nuts and bolts of any kind of element that helps with the efficient regulation of social interactions falls within a conventional domain. Right. And then another thing I think is interesting with regards to the film is Nakia's character, which is the, the individual under the psychological um, domain here, because Nakia in, in, in a lot of ways, I think, was struggling with individual autonomy within the film and trying to figure out how does she situate herself within Wakanda. Um, and, and, and in some ways, aligning with tradition and in some ways, breaking from it. And, and exercising autonomy and how do those things kind of play out in the film. So these are just some examples by which we can look at how these three domains played a role in understanding many of the events that help characterize Wakanda as a nation in the film. And these are only a few examples. There are many, many more. So why these age groups are these grades? So I decided to do three to five, uh, grades three to five, which typically corresponds to ages eight to 10. And largely because when I looked at the, the learning objectives, which I got from the, uh, the state of Washington and is put together by the superintendent of public instruction, they had these learning objectives for social studies education. And I just focused on the civics education component of those objectives. And when I started to read through them, and I'll, I'll show you some in an in a upcoming slide, I thought that they were generally consistent with some of the social and moral capacities that developmental psychologists have been pointing to or have identified that children around these age groups, uh, in their studies at least, and dealing with hypothetical situations in a lot of cases, appear to demonstrate on some level. So one, the idea that children make conceptual distinctions that map onto these domains, meaning they tend to reliably distinguish moral issues from non-moral issues, rather those, nor, more, rather those non more issues are conventional or personal, excuse me, or psychological. The, there's research that uh, points to this age group being an age group where you start to see an increase in psychological knowledge of other people. So for example, understanding the role that intentions play in other people's moral decisions, understanding how people can have rely on different emotions, different information to inform their decisions, right? And also thirdly, these concepts, some research has pointed to children and being able to weigh and balance these concepts in situations where the child may determine that more than one concept is relevant. So as they trying to work through what the actor in the vignette or situation should do, they're trying to weigh different concepts in terms of which one takes precedent. So I think these are some really interesting capacities that I think are broadly consistent with the learning objectives and the civics education component of this, um, the document that I consulted in the state of Washington. So what I have here in this slide is basically 
an example for each grade level, an example of a learning objective, as well as a possible activity that might be started that might potentially serve in the interest of this learning objective, right? And in a lot of ways, these are activities that could be stemmed from some of the conflicts, some of the events in the film, right? Um, so for example, one learning objective for third grade is that they should be able to explain diverse perspectives of cultural groups within a community, right? So one particular activity, potential activity might be having children think about creating safety laws for a hypothetical community who hold diverse views on punishment, right? Um, in parentheses there, where I have unity and diversity, that's the kind of category from the document uh, referencing what that, what that actual learning goal is, right? It's basically a summary of the description in the first bullet at the top, right? So for example, just like the implications of the interve interventionist isolationist debate in the film had implications for changing laws, right, within Wakanda, right? Um, so if you have diverse views on what you should do in a given issue, right, um, how do you come up with laws that could connect to having children think about different perspectives on punishment, right? And you could even use some of the events from Black Panther as an example, right? Um, for fourth grade, the goal, one of the goals is that they should be explained how well a legal ban on smoking in public places promotes the right to life. So one example, right, could be to have children discuss or debate the pros and cons of sharing vibranium with other nations, right? So this can help achieve or potentially move kids towards thinking about evaluating a law or policy. What features would children use to evaluate the pros and cons? of such a law or such a policy of sharing versus not sharing? Where do children fall and what, particularly what are the reasons that they give for making this type of decision? And then last but not least, fifth grade, um, one of the goals is to explain how public is, the public issue of censorship is related to the right to freedom of speech. So one potential activity that could take place is you could have kids evaluate the ceremonial battle, which I think plays a very important role in the film but they can look at it through the lens of procedural justice and de develop criteria. There's a typo there, there's an L or it shouldn't be, uh, apologize for that. Um, but think about criteria for when it would be appropriate and not appropriate to violate those procedures, right? So in an abstract, how do children view procedural justice as it applies to an a, a, a issue like the ceremonial battle in the film? And, <clears throat> When would it be appropriate, if at all, to violate those procedures? Are there any situations where you would think that, you know what, this procedure needs to change because of another consideration, right? Um, and this hopefully would help think about or have children think about these issues related to rights and responsibilities. Right. So my hope here, as I wrap up, is that if it's not the Black Panther film, it's it's some other potential media product that children are interested in that individuals, you know, teachers and parents maybe consider taking another look at with regards to what are some of the underlying concepts included in the, the media. And in so far as children are interested in them, how might those concepts be used to engage children's emerging social and moral capacities in various areas, thinking about morality, harm, fairness, thinking about norms and laws, and also thinking about how those things intersect and what happens when those things are in conflict or when you're trying to weigh moral issues and, 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 and legal issues, for example, or conventional issues at the same time. So um, thank you for spending this time, my presentation, and that concludes my talk. Take care. <laughs>